Hello you beautiful audience. This is Reddit Stories. And today's topic is 9 Wholesome Stories Part 13 1. On my second flight ever, we hit wind shears while we were landing. I had only flown once before, from Detroit to Chicago so super quick, and it was fine but I always had this weird fear of flying from I don't know where, maybe the idea of being in a metal tube in the air I don't know. We are landing and then suddenly we aren't and the plane is falling. Some overhead bins opened and shit is all over, people start screaming. I now have a pilot friend who tells me that we probably only dropped maybe a foot or so but it felt like we were falling towards the ground which wasn't so far away because, as I said, we had been fucking landing. I don't scream. I don't pee myself. I just grabbed the hand of the guy next to me and said something like, I hope there's a cool afterlife. This guy was a seasoned flyer, I learned later, and he immediately starts to talk in this soothing, dad voice. He keeps talking until we level out and the pilot says something like, gonna try that again, hit some wind shears lol. We got rerouted to Cleveland, about 3 hours from the Detroit airport. They offer to fly us home on another plane but no way in fuck am I getting on another plane. Dad guy says, I can rent us a car and drop you back at home in X because I live in Y. Nowadays me would be terrified but I was 22 and said, sure. He rents a nice car that he charges to his company, one of the big bank types, I forget which, and we drive home for 3 hours. He has a car phone, it was 1994 which I thought was the coolest thing ever so he tells me all about how they work, calls his wife and I share in the magic of the car phone. Nothing bad happens, no touching, no nothing. Drops me off at home, refuses to accept any money, because he charged it to his work, and drives off into that good night. 2. I was in Rome by myself for the first time and on a pub crawl with the hostel I was staying at. We ended the pub crawl at the Spanish steps and I was drunk and in awe of the fact I'd made it to Rome by myself and was experiencing everything firsthand. There was a group of guys standing close by and I grabbed one of them and said oh my god. We are in Rome. Look at this. Isn't it great? And he started laughing and we jumped up and down like little kids, giggling. I gave him my email address and we've been long distance friends for 15 years now, both married with kids and we still laugh at our wholesome, random meeting in Rome one late night. 3. This is kind of a long story, but bear with me. A few years ago I was at the grocery store, after watching my favorite NCAA b-ball team lose their game at the Sweet 16. I was obviously upset, and looking to drown my sorrows with some more brews at home. As I left the grocery store I passed by a man who was obviously both physically, and mentally impaired. I noticed that he had a backpack on the back of his auto wheelchair, and a whole gallon tub of ice cream had fallen out. So I put down my 12 pack and zipped his ice cream back into his backpack. He muttered something to me, but I couldn't understand what he was saying. Feeling good about myself, I turned to walk out of the store, and as I leave I hear a scree, scraping noise on the floor like nails on a chalkboard. I dismiss it, and then again, I hear a scree so I turn around to go talk to him, which again, I can barely understand. When I get to him I quickly notice that he's holding the front wheel to his wheelchair in his hand, and asking me to fix it for him. I took it in my own hand and examined it. It was a broken metal piece, and there was no way I could fix it. Where are you trying to go? I said calmly the first time. A completely unintelligible answer followed. Can I help you? I said a bit louder this time. I finally made out the words, bus, and so off we went to the bus stop across the street. His wheelchair was not only low on battery, but since he didn't have a wheel, I had to hold it upright and push it forward at the same time. It was also very very heavy. It was not fun in any sort of way, but I was there to help, and by gone I was gonna do it. So we get to the bus stop. It's not that one. Shit I thought to myself. 
I thought this was almost over, and I'd have my GGG points for the day. So we went across the street and down a block and go to the next stop. By this time I'm starting to pick up on his verbal and physical cues, and can tell a little bit more of what he's saying. He wants me to wait with him for the bus. His name was Carl. He had something around his neck, but didn't want me to take it off, but I could see his name. After about 15 minutes the bus finally arrives, and I help load him on and pay his fare and get him strapped into the wheelchair section. I sort of explain the situation to the bus driver, and he just looks at me with this bewildered face. What the hell am I gonna do with him, he says. This was really the point where the whole situation started to hitting me deep. I could hear Carl muttering some words that I couldn't make out, and I could have left feeling great about myself as a person. After all, it's not like he asked me to take him home. But in all of his mutterings, I could tell that Carl needed my help. The bus driver couldn't take him home. Through all his disability, he looked at me, human to human, right in the eye, and I knew he needed help. Even though he didn't say it, I knew what he wanted me to do. All men in the world were equal in that moment. I turned to the bus driver, and said that I would go get my car and follow the bus to his stop. If I could have just fit him into my car I would have, of course it was a long way away, and in the opposite direction. As the bus driver waited for me I got in my car and turned to follow the bus. I muted the music in my car, and then I started crying. Like a baby. How could I have thought something as stupid as a basketball game was actually important in life? How could I actually be so bummed about something so trivial? Here they are, people all around us, 24-7 who need help. And I watched basketball, and then got mad at a loss. What does Carl have to deal with every day that I don't? My emotions are petty and first world. I cried harder than I ever had. For humanity I guess. My own loss of it. So we finally got to his stop, in a bad area of town, and get Carl's address off of his name batch. It's not close either, and I have to do the balancing act with his super heavy chair again. I get to his street and it's on top of a huge hill. Fuck it, let's do this, I think to myself as I start making my way up the hill. Just then I was hit with the most magnificent energy from the inside out. I started taking faster steps, and all of a sudden the weight of the chair disappeared. Eventually I started jogging, and Carl and I were both laughing hysterically at each other as I pushed him up the hill to his house. After some shenanigans with his neighbors, we finally got a key to his home. I pushed him into his room, and got him onto his bed. Thank you he said, in his same, now familiar, muttered tone. Thank you. I turned to leave, but once more turned back around. You're welcome Carl, and don't forget. I unzipped his backpack, took out his gallon of ice cream, and put it in his freezer. He smiled, and I left. The next day I called his caregiver, and set him up with a new chair. I still smile every time I pass by that same grocery store and see Carl wheeling around in his shiny new ride. Smiley face, TL, DR personally delivered ice cream to Carl's freezer. 4. Years ago, I used to spend a fair bit of time on sites that randomly paired users who were using webcams. I was struggling after being sexually assaulted as a freshman in college, I couldn't sleep, so I'd often pop onto these SFW webcam chats at night so I wasn't alone. One night, I met a wonderful German man. I can't recall his name, but we clicked immediately and spent four to five hours together. He was the first person I told about being assaulted. He comforted me and we stayed online for so long because we wanted to watch the sun rise together. We didn't exchange contact information, so it was simply a beautiful, healing night with a kind soul halfway around the world. I still think about him all these years later. Thanks, German friend. 5. I've shared this story before, but I'll never forget this experience. When I was a kid we didn't have a lot of money, 
so we often shopped at thrift stores. What I loved about that was that you could get 10 books for a dollar, so I would plant myself in front of the book section and make piles of which one I wanted to get and then decided after I'd gone through them all. One day an older lady saw me sitting with my piles and asked if I liked to read. I told her I did and showed her a few of the books I found that I liked. She smiled and then pulled a dollar out of her purse, handed it to me and said, promise me that you'll keep reading. I was so happy and immediately stood up and said that I would. She smiled and walked away and I went back to my piles able to pick out an extra 10 books to take home. It was just a small act of kindness for her, but for me having a random stranger encourage my love of reading and making me promise to never stop definitely had a lot to do with my continued love of reading. This was probably 22 to 23 years ago, but I still think of her whenever I buy a new book. 6. I was on a vacation to the US and I went to Miami. Got there to a closed hotel, terrible weather, and miserable taxi drivers. I was alone and not enjoying the Miami experience. Anyway, I was walking down the street and there was this black guy, feels relevant, coming the other way. I looked at him and smiled. He smiled back and in a super chilled way, said he he yeah, yeah as one might when finding something agreeable. This made my break into mild laughter, which set him off, which set me off. Within seconds of making eye contact, we were both laughing our arses off in the middle of the street. Like, knee slapping laughter. Eventually we settled down, gave each other a massive hug and went our separate ways. It was strange as fuck, but it really turned my experience around. I moved on thinking, no matter how bad this experience is, I'll always have that story. It just felt like like a genuine moment of connection between two people from different worlds. Not a word needed to be said. 7. Years ago when I was a broke college student, I received some bad news from home about my father's ill health. I wanted to get back as quickly as possible, but needed to wait a couple of hours for the next bus that was going back to my town. I remember sitting in a cafe waiting those two hours and it just felt so long and my stomach was in knots. I started crying while I was sitting at the table just going over everything in my mind. An older lady who was sitting a couple of tables away from me saw me and came over to chat. She asked me where I was from and bought me a hot chocolate, and we just sat there and talked until it was time for me to go for my bus. I nearly didn't feel the time pass in the end. Very small random act of kindness, but I've never forgotten it. 8. Politely let a random nice lady enter the tram before me, and when we both boarded we had a bit of a chat, I can't for the life of me remember what it was about, she was really really nice and kind, and she ended the convo with a I hope God is with you before the left the tram. I damn near almost cried because. I think she was Christian, she had a cross necklace, and I'm Muslim, and this is a majorly Muslim city, so she worded that really nicely to fit both her religion and mine. Ten minutes before I met her, I found out I would be flunking my first year at uni, and that just absolutely crushed me. I was on a tram to go to a consult with a professor for the exam I just failed, that exam meant I would be retaking the year. Actually, by some sheer luck, some new laws got instated and I was able to pass to the next year. It all went to shit after that but oh well, life happens. 9. I was working doing cable installation. I had all my tool belt on, and a cordless drill in a holster at my side. I was going out to my van for some reason, and down the sidewalk there was another guy who was also doing some kind of work down the street and wearing a tool belt with a holstered drill as well. He suddenly stopped and faced me, his feet apart, knees slightly bent and his hands hovered over his sides like he was getting ready to draw in a Wild West duel. The body language was loud and clear, and I snapped into the same pose and for a moment we created a little scene as gunslingers. After a moment or two of tension we both drew our drills and aimed at each other, then bust out laughing and went on with our business. This marks the end of the video. If you like my content, consider subscribing as it helps me a lot.
See you until next time.